when we decided to hold a concert in London for Lions, it was going to be a two-pronged affair, which it was. There was an afternoon event in Trafalgar Square, and then there was the concert in the evening in St Pancras Church. And in the midst of all of this, Cecil was killed. And once Cecil was killed, the world began to wake up to what was happening to Lyons. And we realised that this gave us a huge opportunity to bring together a multitude of concerned individuals to put their own talents together in terms of fantastic musicians at the concert and conservationists who came and made passionate speeches and celebrities who came and, and told the world how they felt about what was happening to lions. And in the end, it just became a very powerful message, all shouting out together, let us end the catastrophe for lions and let's save that species from extinction. My name is Peter Egan. It's my pleasure to um, steer you through this evening this um, tribute um, in support of these most wonderful creatures. I'm sure that all of you, like me, until, well, certainly in my case recently, assumed that lions would be around forever. But how wrong we were. Now we know differently. Now we know that we are getting very, very close to losing them in the wild forever. Now we know that they are being hunted almost to extinction by rich trophy hunters so that they can have their photograph with their foot on a dead lion and take their trophies home to whichever country they come from and hang them on their office wall or their homes or wherever, which is a quite grotesque. And like Peter said, I just cannot understand why anybody would want to do that. We also know that lions get killed by poachers for the money that they can get for their skins and their bones. And that ranchers in South Africa cruelly breed lions by the hundreds, taking their cubs from them at birth. The lionesses grieve, as any mother does, and they use these cubs to make a great deal of money until the lions are too big and too dangerous to be with human beings at which time the ranchers sell them on again for vast amounts of money for the specific purpose of being hunted and killed in an enclosure where the lion has no chance of escape. I don't know, but I can't get my head around that. My name is Sienna, and I'm a Lion Aid young ambassador. I first heard about Lion Aid when my mum saw something posted on Facebook about canned hunting. We found out more about this horrible practice, and from then on, I was determined to do what I could to help raise awareness about the plight of the wild African lion and their diminishing numbers. I have involved my friends and my school. I have baked and sold dog biscuits, done a sponsored walk, and tried to inspire others to donate their time to raise much needed funds. I hope you will think about my generation and generations to come who love lions and deserve to have them kept safe and where they belong on the wild savannas of Africa and not in cages in zoos or bred for hunting. When you can feel oh, oh, oh. Say why let them die And you'll wait with a gun on the side of the road And you'll lay their bodies out there cold You shoot them down you bear trap on the ground The way hard men feel them They say yeah so Isn't it strange that In our language we talk of the bravery of a lion The heart of a lion We aspire Men aspire to be as great as a lion And yet what do we stand by And let people do We let people slaughter them In the most disgusting of ways 
now we have the opportunity uh, to send out a message uh, across the world that this behavior is not going to be tolerated. I do hope this goes out on the internet and I would appeal to any of the young people in Anonymous, that great group of, of young activists, all these hunting websites where these psychotic people, these people to be pitied more than scorned because there is something seriously wrong with you. Go crash the sites, cause chaos. and send out that message that the one thing that is going to be over is killing animals for your own enjoyment and to make up your own personal deficiencies. Thank you. Hello, this is Jane Goodall. First, let me congratulate LionAid for putting this event together. I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to share my thoughts on the killing of Cecil the lion. Because he was known and loved, his cruel wounding by crossbow and eventual killing hours later has shocked and angered people all around the world. But we should remember that every lion is a unique individual with his or her role to play. All trophy hunters and those engaged in canned hunts are just as much to be reviled as the Minnesota dentist. He is not the only villain. Hello, I'm Julie Peasgood and I'm Wendy Turner-Webster. Join us in supporting the amazing Lion Aid and the fight against trophy hunting. It really is a disgusting sport and it must be stopped as soon as possible. Thank you. You loosed the deadly arrow straight into her side. With a roar she fell. That was how she died. In pain and agony, you took her life away. You came to terrorize, she just came to play. They're upon the carousel, up in the earth, the sights, the smells. I get the feel I'm never coming down. One more time around, up in the earth, the lights below. Thousand faces all aglow, reflect the hopes and dreams, signs, screams, coins, and a wishing well. I know one more time. Around. I'm sitting here with my friend uh, Siam, beautiful male lion, as I'm sure you would agree. It still perplexes me and is really beyond uh, my wildest imagination how somebody could want to trophy hunt this beautiful animal and hang its head on their wall or make a rug um, of its skin. This is such a majestic, beautiful animal. Uh, I really wish I could be there with you guys over in London to support the concert and to support Lion Aid. Unfortunately, I have to be here with my furry friends, uh, but I hope you all can support this good cause and really let's all stand together to try and put an end to canned hunting and trophy hunting of lions in the wild. The power of the mob is a very, very powerful thing these days. Uh, and it's, it's how things start and it's how things get changed and especially with animal welfare, um, it's incredibly important that we, we need a lot of change. You go onto some of the hunting websites, there's kind of a menu of what you can shoot that day, ranging from the lion at the top to maybe a wildebeest or a deer at the bottom. Obviously they have the classic photo which are, are great friend uh, Ricky Gervais is obsessed with tweeting which I think is fantastic and that brings me on to social media what we can do because we've got Twitter we've got Facebook the advantages of social media it's free uh, it's incredibly spontaneous and you can cause change from it my particular favorite catchphrase when it comes to animal welfare campaigning is to keep the conversation going because as, as long as you keep talking about the issue um, people know that it exists and, and to stop talking about the issue means either it's not important anymore or it's been solved. There's a, there's a film coming out called Blood Lions, which I, is worth mentioning, which is all about this. And they've, in the trailer, they interview some of these trophy hunters. And I'm always fascinated to see what sort of personality will just shoot a lion um, f for the hell of it, really. And a lot of them will argue it's for conservation. Uh, a lot of them will argue that they love animals. And with 15,000 left in the wild, if you love animals and you live in America and you care about conservation, why not write a check 
and send it to the safari park. Why do you have, you know? It seems so simple. <laughs> You not allowed to use the cameras? Yeah. My technique was to get on and off as quickly as I could. I give you two minutes to leave my property. Two minutes. You are from the Greenies. We love you. But what is there to hide? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I want you. Don't take your face off me. I think South Africa is most probably one of the only places in the world where we breed lions commercially. And we breed them for hunting. We're talking of six to eight thousand lions in captivity. It's not against the law. It's extremely unethical and immoral and against the animal's welfare, but it's not against the law. Breeding wild animals is no sin. Part of the story, part of the narrative, is brutality. Every single day in South Africa, at least two to three, Captive bred, hand bred, tame lions are being slaughtered in Cape Town. I'm an animal lover, therefore I am a hunter. It's not like we're mass murderers that just enjoy watching things die. It's all about somebody going out there and having fun killing a lion. I'm calling from the United States. I'd like to see about uh, doing one of your lion hunts. It's this whole murky world which is not open to scrutiny. From Bloodlines here in Cape Town, we wish you all a wonderful evening and we'd also like to endorse the wonderful work that Lion Aid is doing in support of Africa's lions and particularly in bringing an end to the horrific practices of predator breeding and can hunting. We see it now, bees blooming right through the cracks of society. Uh, can you feel it now, making its way through your lungs in the air you breathe? Look around, people, open your eyes and see. Nana, I have this book. It has pictures inside of huge maned cats who lived in a pride. Oh, they look powerful and beautiful and could rule, I do think. So I don't understand how they now are extinct. Yes, my darling, the last one was killed in 2032 when a hunter from Utah shot it down with an arrow or two. Oh, the lions were wonderful, so big and so proud. They would walk the savannah and roar oh so loud. Once there were thousands who would roam over the land until hunters took them home for a hundred thousand rand. There are genetically modified lions, yes, it's true. A cloned one was born yesterday in San Diego Zoo. The strange thing is now, not one of them roars, like the days when they roamed the savannah, like I saw. They say that everyone remembers where they were that day, when the last rhino fell and its horn chopped away. When the last lion's head was cut from its bones and its skin flown out from the land it once roamed. Now, none of us wants this tale to be true. The years left to stop this are sadly quite few. 
but still don't despair as Cecil's demise has ignited the world with passion and rise. I believe if we join and work hard as a team, the lion's roar will still bellow in the next century. Thank you. 2008, a friend rang up and said, oh look, you used to have a lion. There's a clip on YouTube with a couple of idiots with long hair um, and pink bell bottoms um, with a lion. I think it amused you. So I kind of turned on and I said, my God. So I rang up and I said, it is us. <laughs> so we had no knowledge about how to use social media. Um, there are less than 15,000 lions, as we've heard. When we took Christian, there were 400,000 lions in Africa. So that's how grim it is. But Christian has become a great ambassador for um, conservation because his life was a success. Cecil has now become of one because his life ended in tragedy. But both of them are going to help all of us kind of fight for these lions. Thank you very much. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Mm. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Oh, you know, can't you hear the pitter and the patter of the raindrops trickling down your fire escape ladder? Life can be so fine, fine as mm, 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 wine. Hi, good evening everyone. Steve Travis, President of Protecting the African Lions Foundation. I'm so sorry we can't be there with you this evening, but uh, we're just sending you all our best wishes. I hope you're having a successful evening. Your lion voices are being heard loud and proud across the world, and thanks for all your support. Keep up the great work. I'm here very briefly to tell you about the three hats that I'm wearing tonight. The first hat I wear is, is with my company, which is called Kinetic Six, and the company, some of the company are here. Kinetic Six work with Wildlife Conservancy Rangers across anywhere where wildlife uh, needs conserving. We provide the training, the equipment, the mentoring, uh, and the technology to help wildlife conservancy rangers combat illegal wildlife trophy hunting and trafficking and poaching. And we are currently active in seven countries in Africa and we have over 10 projects running. Um, I'm also, uh, for my sins, the, the UK chairman of, of the Savo Trust. The Savo Trust is a Kenya wildlife conservation uh, uh, organization based obviously in Savo. We work outside of the Savo parks, the famous Savo parks, in the areas where 70% of the wildlife live, because only 30% of the wildlife in that region actually receive the, the protection from the, from the redoubtable protection from the Kenya Wildlife Service. And the third hat, of course, is here is, is a friend of Lion Aid. We have a project that's now only 12 months old. It's called the Malkahalaku Conservancy. It's not our conservancy, it's theirs, it belongs to them. It's 1.4 million acres. And in that 1.4 million acres, three years ago, we had the biggest single worst incident of elephant poaching in, in Kenyan history with 32 elephants killed um, with men with guns in one night. Since the Malkahalaku Conservancy has been operating, we've lost no elephants. And as far as we know, we've lost no lions either. I'll leave you with the, with the part, parting thought, is that the rangers we equip, train and support are on the trail of the trophy hunters. Hurry round, you got a world's round, and you got your money down, but I found I'm no longer free, when you've got your worries round. I can no longer speak When you've got your worries around There's no room for me
there's a hole There's a hole oh, oh. There's a hole in my pocket But I can't decide if it's bigger than ever oh, Shrinking in size, there's a hole You have no right to speak to me so kind. I can't go on holding on to time. Now that we're living in separate lives. I had the privilege of working with Born Free legend um, George Adamson, the legendary lion man of Africa. And when George was murdered by <clears throat> ivory poachers, I took over and rescued his last three um, um, lion orphans, and I relocated them to Botswana and rehabilitated them back into the wild. Unfortunately, the male, Batian, like Cecil, and the very... Um, similar circumstances as Cecil the Lion was trophy hunted. Um, great parallels between, chilling parallels between the deaths of Bastian and Cecil, both killed by trophy hunters. Uh, but we need to carry on the fight. And I remember what George always said to me, what George Adamson always said to me, is that in this fight, you know, for the Lion, we must all never give up. So thank you all for your support for the African Lion and for your support of Lion Aid. Hi, I'm Professor Noel Fitzpatrick. I want to congratulate you on all you're doing at Lion Aid. And I want to wish you all the best for this special event. Um, it's incredibly important that we do all that we can to protect these beautiful and now very much endangered species. G'day, it's John Glassford here from the Rotarian Action Group for Endangered Species. I'm here in Gang Main near Wagga Wagga in Australia. Wishing you all the very, very best for, for today in, I believe, a, a real turnaround for, for the lions and today it's about the lions and we're very keen to do something through Rotary. We have 1.2 million members worldwide and I call upon all of our Rotarian and Rotary active friends around the world to, to join us in this fight to save these wonderful, beautiful creatures we call lions. My experience with the Cecil story was probably a moment in time that changed my life to a large degree because we were waking people up to a brutal reality that all of us were aware of here. That if your pockets are deep enough, if you have enough money, there is not one creature in this world, no matter how endangered, no matter how close to extinction, that you can't kill, that you can't destroy, to put the head on your wall or to put their skin on your carpet in Shanghai, Dallas, or anywhere else in the world that you might be privileged enough to live. That is disgusting. That is horrific. But that's the reality of what we were talking about. And Cecil is not about a lion. Cecil's not even about a species. It's about our relationship with wild animals that we share this planet with. It's about greed. It's about corruption. And it's about cruelty. That within our lifetime, within our lifetime, will destroy the most precious ecosystem that has probably ever existed in all the universes that we can even imagine. And yes, the figures speak for themselves. We've talked about it today, 15,000 lions or less. To be honest, I can't tell you how many lions are left in Africa. There's no accurate way at the moment of monitoring it. And a lot of governments that will tell you how many they have, I wouldn't trust them as far as you could throw them. I do not trust a country that's willing to sell off its elephants at $25,000 a piece and airship them to China to go in so-called safari parks. I don't trust this African government that takes its farm lion numbers 
and mixes them with its wild lion numbers to say that it's got a healthy population. That's absurd, that's wrong, and that's corrupt. I don't accept the British government's position that trophy hunting is viable because it brings real economic benefit to the people of Africa, and it also will bring real benefits in terms of conservation rubbish. It does not. You can shoot an animal once with a bow and a gun, and it's gone. You can shoot it with a camera hundreds of thousands of times and generate millions of dollars in income that help to protect the environment and protect the people. We will never give up on this moment. You don't get them very often. It's a defining moment in conservation and wildlife protection that probably won't happen again in 20 or 30 years. And this is not just about lions. We lost 35,000 elephants last year in Africa, one every 15 minutes. We lost over 2,000 rhinos. We're not even certain of how many animals are left in many parts of Africa. We can be damn certain in the next 20 years that many of them will disappear. It's in our hands. We have the power to bring this madness to an end. We have the power to be the generation that protected the future of Africa's wildlife for the future of Africa's people. We are a beacon to the world, and I hope if we can continue to fight, we can change the world to make it better. Thank you very much. I would add just one thing. Um, I agree with every single syllable of what Dominic said, and I would just add that it's a personal choice for me Another contribution I make to my compassionate feeling for animals is I don't eat them and I don't wear them. Nobody's heart belongs to me. I hope who cares. Nobody writes this song for me no one belongs to me that's the least of my care I may be sad at times and disinclined to play but it's not bad at times to go your own sweet way nobody's arms belong to me no arms feel strong to me I admire the moon as a moon just a moon nobody's heart belongs to me today Thank you to all of you here, and I hope that you all go home tonight thinking about the lions. Look, if we don't make a big roar ourselves, those lions are going to be silenced within the next 10 years. It's that bleak. They are on the brink, and we will fight the good fight for as long as we can and to the end of our days, but we do need all of you guys out there supporting and pushing and going to your MPs, going to your MEPs. Don't sit back and let our wildlife be slaughtered. Yes. I may be sad at times and disinclined to play but it's not bad at times to go your own Nobody's arms belong to me. No arms feel strong to me. I admire 
the moon as a moon, just a moon. Nobody's heart belongs to me today. The shadow of yours. I'm here with a wonderful Peter Egan, who has been our amazing host for the evening. It's been a wonderful evening, don't you agree? It's been absolutely sensational, really fantastic. I just love these evenings when you have groups of people who are so committed to compassion and caring about animal welfare. So I'm delighted to be here tonight to support Lion Aid. I think that what everyone can do at home is to support ethical tourism, not to go on safaris where they allow hunting. I think they can use the social media sites to share the information about canned hunting and about the fact that so many species are about to become extinct. Hi, I'm here with actress Diane Keane, and Diane is one of Lion Aid's patrons and did something amazing last month. You I climbed did. Mount Kilimanjaro, didn't you, for Lion I did, Aid? I did, yeah, I did. And you did it with a broken foot. <laughs> In fact, two breaks, wasn't it? Two was bones there? were broken, yeah. I did it about two weeks before I um, left. So, so where, where are you raising money for this? What well, website? Well, on the Just Giving page, and okay. um, which was my page, and on and some people donate direct to Lion Aid. Yeah. Um, so there you go. You can still donate. You can. It's still ongoing. You can still send money to Lion Any Aid. Any amount. It doesn't matter and how big or small. she had a broken foot. So you must. You must. If you could say anything or get people to do anything, what would it be? Do you think? Uh, I think everyone has a voice now, especially with social media, with Facebook and Twitter especially. Um, so I would encourage people to start petitions, to write blogs, to write Facebook posts, uh, to challenge some of the major brands responsible for, uh, for the decline in line numbers. You know, if you challenge a brand, either they agree with you, mm -hmm. in which case you share it and everyone thinks they're great. If they don't agree with you, you, ch you share mm -hmm. it and everyone doesn't think they're very good. Yeah. Or they don't, uh, they don't answer, so you say, why are you ignoring me? I had no idea of, of what a cynical exercise it is in mm -hmm. the exploitation of animals. You know, yeah. animals are exploited enough in mm -hmm. the world without inventing another way uh, you know, to make money from the, from, the, from the death of an animal that's probably waiting to be fed. You've got to be a coward, haven't you, to, to do that to an animal? Because well, of course, uh, yes. To, to shoot uh, an animal that's drugged and is coming around yeah. from being drugged yeah. in, in a, a caged enclosure where it can't get away, yeah. might come to you for food because yeah. it trusts you. Yeah. Um, the whole thing is just terribly morally and ethically wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. If there's anything you could say to the public out there, what do you think it would be? Well, I'm a, a great fan of George Bombio, who wrote a, a great book called Feral, and it was about the rewilding of, of Britain and Europe and the rest of the world. He explains in his book how important the alpha predator is, because if the alpha predator goes, then the whole ecological system starts to crumble. And when that crumbles, that's not just bad for the animals. That's bad for the people that live in that country, and it's bad for the rest of the world. So if you can support Lion Aid and, and, and start raising a bit of a storm and saying we're not going to take this. We're not going to allow people who are psychotic to go and kill animals in such a disgusting way. The world's cruel enough as it is and we should stand up and say enough is enough. Where have all the lions gone? It seems as yesterday. When roaring could be heard at dusk and cubs were free to play. Where have all the lions gone? Tell me, do you know? Surely they've not all been killed. Oh, tell me it's not so. Surely they've not all been killed. Oh, Tell me it's not so.